Hello, and welcome to Fold Your Encores. I am Reginald Dwayne Betts, and I read with poet William Archilla for a reading entitled The Human Voice and Struggle for the O.B. Hardison Poetry Series at the Folger. The Folger has launched this new series, Encores, that brings plays, music, and spoken word from the Folger archives directly to you. Now you see in this reading, I give you a little bit of something from my book, Bastards of the Reagan era. And the poem I want you to really hear is Elephants in the Fall. Because during these times, we try to stay close to the folks that we love and we try to remember the folks that love us. Now, you are about to see poems from me and William and we hope that you will enjoy watching some of this reading. If you would like to know more about the OB Hardison Poetry Series, please visit folger.edu. There, you will find information about upcoming readings and so much more. We hope you will join us for these weekly episodes of Encores, highlighting all that the Folger has to offer. Now, can I get an Encore? Thank you for tuning in. Bury this pig. Behind the cornfield, we scale the mountainside, looking for a foothold among the cracks, rooting out weeds, trampling on trash, the trek as if it were a holy crusade, bodies armor mounted on horses, banners fluttering in the air. Then one morning, we stumble upon the thing, dead, cramped in a ditch, covered in ants, Trotters grimy, a purple snout of flies, and not a dollop of blood, but a thick piece of hide cradling about 50 pounds of hog. Someone said, kush, kush, as if to awaken the thing. I thought about the carcass, blood slick, staggering into the room, grumbling and drowning as if deep in mud, eyes buckled in fear, bones breaking down to the ground, open to the chop and tear of human hands, pork and lard, four feet, fat back, cut into slabs, an organ fattened and butcher. It continued for weeks, a few of us meeting in the afternoons just to look at the steaming belly, maggots stealing the gray of the brain. Each time, one more barefoot boy probing the eye socket with a stick. Some of us came back armed, picks and bars, shovels dusty in our hands, until the ground groaned with war. The sky fell, cracked the earth. How was I to know they would be hooked, hacked, snouts smashed on the wall, their bodies score screws on the floor? How was I to know I would bury this pig rock after rock? Three minutes with Mingus. When I read of poets and their lives, son of a milkman and seamstress, raised in a whistle stop town or village, a child who spent his after school hours deep in the pages of a library book, I want to go back to my childhood, back to the war, rescue that boy under the bed, listening to what bullets can do to a man, take him of the homeland, enroll him in school, his class size 10, unfold the fables of the sea, a Spanish galleon slamming up and down the high waters. This is why I write poems, why I prefer solitude when I listen to your lazy sound of brass on the phonograph. You give language to black roosters and fossil bones, break down phrases between the L.A. River and the yellow taxi cabs of New York. I picture you in Watts, the 240-pound wrath of a bass player building up steam, woodshedding for the strictly segregated hood, those who seek a tiny shot of God digging through hard pan, the hummers grunt and blow. I need a gut bucket of gospel, the flat land of cotton to catch all those Chinese acrobats bubbling inside your head. When I think of the day I will no longer hold a pencil within my hand or glance upon the spines of my books, I hear Picasso's Wernica in your half-choked cries. 
a gray workhorse lost in the fire's spiraling notes, a shrieking tenor sax for the woman falling out of a burning house. I want to tell you, if I wrote like you pick and pat in blues and roots, I would understand the caravel of my childhood, loose without oars or sails, rolling on the swells of a distant sea. That's all I got, Mr. Mingus. I give you the archaeology of my words. Every painstaking sound I utter when I come to the end of a line, especially the stress beats of a tiny country I lost long ago. Elephants in the fall for Mackay and Miles. One, Mackay Michael Zamir Betts. November's flame in that year of hard sunsets. Winter's plagancy in days when my insomnia courted cognac. All our thoughts were beginnings, and you became the roundness that grew to a moon above your mother's hips. We waited without a name for your wonder, and three days after your birth, twice named you after the uncle you'll never meet. The name's questions, Micah, who resembles God? Michael, who reminds us of who has gone too soon? And we pronounce Micah as we want it. Mackay, because like the kid from Clockers, we scrape fists and cuffs for the dreams of you. And now, when on most days, your body is all blur and bustle, our song is how right we got it. When a light from that moon spilled out of your mother's belly, I tell you, you were smiling then, as if you knew you were the first song to find me worthy. Two, Miles Delonious Betts, named after the trumpet, after the sound that comes from all the hurt and want that leads a man to turn his back to the world. We named you after Monk too, because sometimes you have to stack legends in a single body already big enough for the sound of them. And we imagined that you gave us a different tune, a way to bang keys into each other until our lives filled with unexpected music. I hear you call me daddy in this land where my father's name is sometimes another word for grave, and I pause. It's the song that wants to unravel me. More crow than swan, I've always been so much caged and caged in. And all that changes when we square M. This old riff on a shotgun merge calls us back. Your mother's hand in mine and the shotgun is where we aim at the world that threatens. And I scoop you in my arms and you are calling us again. Count down to Armageddon. The farm, this collection of dying men is home for just another night. And now October's rust. Snow piles upon the dead. Snow flattens the scarlet leaves of maple trees and crickets rule the black of night with song. Or if you're like me, you call it the noise that wakes you from what troubles sleep. The God and his flashlight against steel bars. His voice as low and tired as mine. Authority a gavel drop gave him makes me listen. And I script before this man who knows me by a number and I'm lost in shouts. And when a chain link belt and buckle wrap my waist, these nails begin to scrape the skin off my palms. My eyes still sleep. The cuffs, the bash that I pretend don't exist, put on my flesh bite and peanut. From three cages down, he stared, transfixed like some mad bullfrog into this sally port so opaque. I almost say, shook ones afraid of sleep, but think his beard enough to let the dogs of his anger loose on the world after these nights in a cell become nothing but more nights in a cell. Outside, the hawk reminds my bones of blocks that straight jacket me in these cuffs. How want for things had me on corners running wild with Bama's name Ray Ray and Quan, Dave, all of us like dogs in them streets. We were afraid is what I'm saying. All cliche and desire, all ignorant of what madness did birth the Swan Road, Lancasters and Oxford Norse that damn near ruined me. I stand and stare, body trapped in this back country that bleeds men like leeches, 
body of stone is kicked from cell to God forsaken cell. Each van ahead a sign somewhere a light will flash and wake a man before he understands his world has gone mad. Every bus a ride another mile away from whatever circle of streets he claimed he owned. I have braved for want of wild beast steel cages, carved my name on bunks and rafters. I fought grown men near double my age for a rep, and now this guard he yanks against the chain so hard I buck, then buckle, a man against the leash. May God have mercy on all sleeping things. This doctor fails to hide my trembling hands and all the cracked crowns with closed eyes and what passes for dreaming here. I'm boxed in. Been here so long, I sweat the funk of cells. My mother wouldn't understand. Not these half steps I take toward my bus escort to hell. I graduated high school numb, already caged with a dead man rattling about my head and get how these back roads will take this body and yes, bury it where I'm nobody. Another man under barbed wire, count time, shakedowns, fist fights, shotguns, knives. And when we walk into the cold air, I'm on the corner with darkness compassing my days. All the currency I ever had was time. Redundant gesture that it is. A waste that want for more. A waste we half dozen, half shuffling, scuffed and nicked on another schooner bound for some sing sing, for some Angola, for some Attica. They say Armageddon been in effect. But let me tell you how this business began.